Hey guys, we're going to continue talking about exponents and we're going to focus on rational exponents, which again are just going to be exponents that are going to contain fractions in them. So, exercise one just kind of reviews uh, the product property we talked about in the last video. And again, we're talking about a power raised to a power. It's pretty much being multiplied, so like in this case, 2 to the 3rd to the raised to the 4th power would be 2 to the 12th. Um, and again, it's 2 to the 3rd. There's 4 of them. So, kind of like that. Um, they do try to throw in a trick one here and see. Um, 3 to the 7th raised to the 0 power would be 3 to the 0. Because 7 times 0 is 0. Which, again, that would equal the number 1. So, a special case in that, pro in that question. Um, but again, the other two you can try on your own. Um, and again, it's just, you're multiplying by that, the exponents together. Now, to get into what we're really talking about, really focuses, is going to be about fractions. So, for exercise 2, they give us a number, 16, raised to a fractional power. And they want us to apply, apply the product property to simplify 1 half and squared. So if I do 1 half times 2, I'm back to 1. So this would equal 16 to the first power, which would just be 16. Now, you could say that in this case, if I had 16 to the half power, and I was to put that in a calculator, it would end up being the number 4. So if I had 16 to the 1 half power, that equals the whole number 4. And for part B, it says, you could see that 16 to the half power is equivalent to what more familiar quantity? Well, in this case, we know 16 to the half power is 4, which would be the same as the square root of 16. So, a fractional exponent, like 1 half, is the same thing as a square root. Now, in the case of some other examples, I was looking at exercise 3. An exponent of 1 half is equivalent to the square root. So if I have 25 to the 1 half power, it's the same as t the square root of 25, which would be 5. And then for 81 and 100 to those powers, you get 9 and 10. So here is the, one of the big ideas. If we have some sort of denominator in our exponent, in the case of the root, it would be that root. So if we do a square root, which would be taking that number apart into two equal products. So again, the square root of 81 is the same thing as 9 times 9. That would give us the answer of 9 out. So we're going to look at some other ones where we would have some different roots. And we're going to use the calculator for some of these. And some people get confused with the higher roots. Um, so if you look at A... 125 to the one-third power. This is just the cube root of 125. So really what's being asked is what number times itself three times could give you that number under that root. So in the case of this, this answer would be 5. And the reason this is 5 is because 5 times 5 times 5 would equal 125. So 5 is your answer. And there's kind of the reasoning for it. So if you look at B, if we had a fourth root of 16, what number could you multiply by itself four times to get 16? And in this case, it would be 2. And again, the reason would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 would equal 16. Now, as we get into C and D, again, this is a negative square root. So this would be... In the case of this, we'd put it 1 over. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that. So the negative exponent would make it a fraction. And then the square root of 9 would be... So in this case, we'd end up with 1 third. And then for 32 to the negative 1 fifth power. So I'm going to make it into a positive exponent. I put it in the opposite side. This would be the fifth root of 32. And then that would equal... The bottom part would equal 2. Okay. 
And you can do all these routes in the calculator. Um, I'll show you where. If you turn it on and you go to math, um, there's a cube root function that's four. And then option five is an option where it lets you put in any root. So if I wanted to check that root, I could go to five. So I put the five in and I go to math and hit five. I put my root in first, there we go. And if I do 32, you're going to see that my answer is going to be two, kind of like what I just talked about right here. Now, moving on to exercise five, they're giving us an exponent of four to three halves power. Now I'm going to toss that into the calculator right now. So I got four. I'm going to use the exponent key, and I'm going to do the fraction three over two which this is going to give me an answer of 8. So, this answer is 8. And the idea here, again, is that, okay, this would be the same as, based on our product properties, 4 to the 3rd power raised to the 1 half power. So if I did 4 to the 3rd power, I have 64. And then 64 to a one-half power would be the same thing as the square root of 64, which ends up being what we got in the calculator, which is 8. Now, the other way you could do it, 4 to the 3 halves power would be 4 to the one-half power raised to another power of 3. So the 3 and the one-half could be interchangeable. So if I take 4 to the one-half power, that's the square root of 4. And the square root of 4 is going to be 2 and 2 raised to the third power, again, is going to be 2 times 2 times 2, which ends up being the number we started with. So we can take both of these, and depending on how we want to break them apart, it should still give us the same answer, because the exponents are commutative just like numbers are. So if I do d, 27 raised to the 2 third power, the bottom number is going to be my root, so if I, I, I could do this two ways. I could do a cube root of 27 squared if I wanted to. Or I could choose to do the square root Or I could choose to go ahead and do 27 squared and raise that to the one-third power. So again, I got two different ways I could do this. And 27 squared to the one-third power should give us the same answer we get for each one. And you can verify each of these in the calculator by typing them in as you see them. But in this case, 27 to the two-third power would be 9. So when you're thinking about which part is what, if we have some sort of fraction as an exponent, let's say like the number 6, if we wanted something like a 4 third power, well that, that top number would be an exponent, and then the bottom number would be equal to a, a root that you're multiplying by. So if you take 4 thirds, it'd be 4 times 1 third. Okay? And if you're still confused with it, just make sure you ask me in class and we'll uh, do some more examples.